Well, thank you so much uh, for staying with us on here on the agenda. Now, the Norwood Community Police Forum is running a project, Lean On Me, an awareness drive for young people and communities in the fight against the abuse of a scheduled drug, a growing phenomenon called Lean, where the drug codeine found in uh, cough mixtures is mixed with other ingredients, including fizzy drinks, uh, for a desired effect. We're joined now by author Mongi Mapipa, who is also a participant in the Norwood Drive, and David Beva is a substance abuse uh, expert. To both of you, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Mongi, you're a young person in Norwood taking part in this process. You've also written a book about uh, different ailments uh, that ail young people. What is this phenomena? How did it come about? Uh, hi, hi, how are you? Uh, uh, the, the whole thing actually, uh, I think it's been started by uh, by, uh, by, 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 uh, by artists, hip hop art, artists. Eh? So the kids you know, started seeing all these guys, you know, rappers you know, who use uh, lean to, 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 to up. We seem to have a bad connection with Mongi, and as I ask uh, our producers to fix that, let's go through to David. David, perhaps the same question for you. What is this phenomenon, and how did it come about? So, what we're talking about here, again, good morning to you, Desiree, and your listeners, is a combination of a concoction that has been become very, very popular, particularly amongst our youth, known as purple drunk, purple lean, sometimes they call it dirty sprite, um, and it is a concoction which is a combination of pain medicine or as a cough mixture mixed with other uh, substances like Mountain Dew or Sprite very often and also with some fruit flavored candy that is used. The cough syrup part of that concoction is the most dangerous part because of the active ingredient being the codeine, which is an opioid drug. And as a chemical name implies, if you have a look at what the actual name for codeine is in the chemical terms, it's 3-methyl morphine. And we all know, we all understand how dangerous morphine can be and is and how addictive it is. So the active ingredients in other cough mixtures or the other anti ingredients are antihistamines, which have other potential sedating effects, and in combination with the codeine could markedly interfere and impair the ability of the person who's abusing it to actually function normally. And this is where the danger lies. It's very popular amongst our youth in particular because it's affordable and readily accessible to them as an over-the-counter medication, which they can obtain very, very easily. The problem is that when codeine is consumed in large amounts and for non-medicinal purposes, it can have extremely harmful effects on the person, particularly on our youth. And they go through with their friends making lean and are enticed to do so very, very often by challenges which are going viral on TikTok called the TikTok challenge. And also because of the fact that it's glorified by the popular culture uh, in multiple songs, in TV shows, etc. And just to mention a few of those people, there's Lil Wayne, there's Justin Bieber and Rob Kardashian, who has been very, very vociferous about making this popular amongst the youth. But unfortunately, like in the example with the rapper Lil Wayne, he was admitted to an intensive care unit where he was almost in a comatized state and was very, very severely affected by it. And this is the problem that we have, that we need to know exactly what the dangers are associated with lean. So give us a sense of uh, the prevalence of this practice in Norwood. Well, I just want to mention that it's not only in Norwood, it is generally right throughout the entire country and not only in South Africa, but this is something that is very, very common in other parts of the world as well. It's not something that is particularly only found in South Africa. The issue that we found is that because of the situation that our youth in particular are finding themselves in, they have uh, sought to try and alleviate some of their suffering, some of their displeasures and their inability to be able uh, to enjoy life by using and resorting to these chemical substances, which gives them a euphoric effect and also gives them the advantage then of escaping some of the problems that they are finding themselves in. 
So, just in terms of the work that is being done uh, in Norwood, who are you speaking to? What are the students telling you about their exposure? So, one of the parts of the program is aimed directly at the schools. Um, the work that the um, policing forum in Norwood have uh, involved in, involved themselves in, is going to the schools with advocacy roles. But what they're trying to do is to actually show the students in particular that they must take ownership of this whole program. And that is the guidance and the advocacy role that they are playing in helping these students to identify what it is that they can do themselves. The days of us telling our youth in particular what they should be doing is over. We want them to recognize that there are dangers. We want to be able to give them enough information to be making an informed decision as to whether they should be involving themselves in such practices. And that only comes with education. So the education part is what is being given to the youth, particularly at schools, for them to make that informed decision. And then to decide how best they can deal with it, recognizing that it is having a detrimental effect on them. But the problem with substance abuse goes much deeper than just that as well. We need to recognize that there are a number of issues that contribute to it. And we talk about a triangle made up of the host, who is the person, made up of the agent, which is the drug, and also, more importantly, the environment that they find themselves in, which is very, very difficult for them to control. And that is what they need to understand, is that they need to do everything possible in order to change their environment that they find themselves in, <clears throat> in order to make it more applicable for them to be able to sustain the enticement that they have to use these drugs in order to change the way they're feeling. Yeah. And that comes with the advocacy role that has been played at the schools where the students themselves decide on their program. How, of course, uh, schools in South Africa are also dealing with the abuse of recreational drugs. On a comparative level, how big is this problem compared to the other problem? And are police treating the problems differently or is it the same? Unfortunately, the idea that we have is that it is still something that is frowned on in terms of the fact that if a child is found in the possession of an illegal substance, they will be dealt with and they will be handed over to the police and that they would then probably land up with a conviction, which then sends them to court. We are trying to move away from this punitive action and recognizing that these particular kids in particular might have an underlying problem, which is what is being termed now as a brain disease, and because of that, we recognize that they are in need of help in terms of the same as we would treat any other disease, rather than incarceration, rather than being put in jail, and rather than being prosecuted in a court. They need to be guided and be given the opportunity to obtain the necessary help that they need, recognizing that they can change the way that they're feeling by doing other activities. Now, unfortunately, in the schooling system, it is not so easy because the school has an obligation to keep their schools clean and in order to make it a safe zone for all other learners as well. Yeah. They need to change and come on board in terms of the new approaches that are being used, which is recognizing this as a health issue and not only a societal issue, which can be addressed independently, but also those recognizing the children with underlying problems that need to have medical assistance in order to be able to deal with the problem as well. We're rejoined now by Mongi Mapipa. Mongi, you have dealt with uh, actual uh, 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 substance abusers who are on uh, having problems with the lean-in phenomena. What are they saying? What leads them to this? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? What are young students saying about what leads them uh, to exploring with this lean uh, ph phenomena? First of all, uh, they, they complain about uh, boredom. They get too bored. They don't have much to, to do, especially in, in our area now where there is no much soccer fields or, or entertainment areas. Now. Boredom is the first thing. And secondly, they, they like to experiment. And now with the experimentation, it's not only my area or or what what the kids that are what they what they say the, those ones that are spoken to. You know, it's a national thing, obviously. So because I can see that everywhere, these young ones they, they 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 just want to look cool. They want to experiment with it and then look cool. And another thing I, that I I picked up from them is that 
it, it's a I say for them they feel that it's a safe track. They don't know that it's not safe, but they, they feel that it's safe. You know, because when you when you've had a, a lean, you don't uh, walk on the street zigzagging. You still look okay. So and it doesn't even smell. So it's safer for them you now. Because when they get home, the parent won't notice that they they've taken lean. They won't be, uh, they won't show much signs you know, except for dilated eyes, obviously, and uh, and the slurred speech. You know. Of which the parents don't know about such uh, such signs, you know? so they they always get away with such. So it's safe for them, it's cool, and uh, it also helps them fight boredom. Yeah. yeah. Let's thank uh, both of you for talking to us. Uh, clearly, this is a very serious problem, and it's commendable that Norwood is take, tackling it head on. But uh, thank you so much for bringing us. Uh, bringing it to our attention, David Bieva is a substance abuse expert and Mongima Pipa is uh, uh, an author but also a participant in the Norwood Drive to try and rid the community of the scourge. The National Institute for Communication.